I'm here at the National Circuit Paddock at Silverstone and I'm here to see something right here in garage 12D, normally reserved for officials and uh, marshals and things like that, to see something I'm really excited about and have been excited about for quite a long time. But before I say any more, let's go make a look, shall we? That's pretty cool. Well, here it is, the 2022 Formula One car. It's the first time I've seen this and my eyes are already darting all over the bodywork. Um, where to start? The uh, best place to start on any racing car, I guess, is the nose. Uh, you notice that the nose of the car is slightly wider than we're used to at the moment. Uh, the reason for that is in 2022, some new front impact test requirements have been introduced. So the noses are a little bit safer on the cars, though it's, I'm going to be very interested to see if some teams try to narrow the nose down a little bit more than we see right here. And then, of course, there's this really quite, well, lively looking front wing. The scope for adjustment on this front wing isn't entirely clear yet looking at the regulations and it's important to note that the 2022 technical regulations haven't been entirely finalised in detail. There's a few details remaining to be disclosed. You can see there is no scope for adjustment on either the inner inboard section of these four front wing elements or the outer section on these very spectacular front wing end plates. But there are a few hints as to areas where the teams can have a little bit of a play within the regulations. You can see this little dive plane on the front. Very simple, very stylistic on this prototype car. I suspect we'll see some really exotic versions of this as the real cars roll out in 2022 itself. The teams are gonna have a little bit of a play in that area. But that's not the really crucial parts of the car that I'm gonna take you and have a look at at the moment. One of the most important areas of this new car are these sections, which we don't really have a name for yet. I guess we can just sort of call them fairings for now, but these sections that come out over the front wheels. You may have noticed in, in earlier images, the wind tunnel test model, the, these sections came right out across the front wheel. Well, as the CFD work's gone on, the wind tunnel testing's gone on, the, the Formula One and the FI have come up with a slightly different shape, and you can see that it's slightly sculpted. It's a twin element section here, so some interesting aerodynamic work going on there, and I think this may not be fully the final version we see of this, but as you get down deep inside, you can see at the base of the brake duct, this is really indicative of what we may see in the 2022 season. There are these, and I'll, I'll come take a closer look here. You can see how detailed these sections are. Lots of little slats and cuts and some complexity, some turning veins, some aerodynamic elements, and call it if you like it, some sticky uppy bits down there. And they will really be an area that the teams want to exploit. But we've got to talk about the wheels and the tyres. The first thing I want to draw your attention to is the shape of the tyre. It is, of course, quite different to 2021. You've got these low profile tyres on these 18 inch wheel rims. And of course, you can't really see the wheel rim because on the inside, it's clothed with all these aerodynamic elements. But on the outside, it's got these carbon fibre wheel covers. Now, these wheel covers are quite different to the versions we've seen fitted to some of the test cars that Pirelli have been doing the interim car tyre testing on. So a few years ago, when I was in the wind tunnel, I tried putting some wheel covers on the outer edge of a wheel rim and it was a huge drag reduction. And that airflow around the car is one of the big parts of this project to deliver the 2022 technical regulations. So these wheel covers and the wake of the wheels, front and rear, are really crucial because this is all about improving the racing, making it easier for drivers to battle each other, for cars to follow one another. And that work is, becomes really crucial when you can move behind the wheels. So while you've got those low profile tires and the high, heavier wheel rims as well, the whole car it should weigh about 790 kilos, about 40 kilo increase over what we have now. However, we don't know the final weight of the cars because there could be some change on the weights and the wheels, tires and the brake assemblies. So the real secret to the car, though, aerodynamically speaking at least, is down here. It's the leading edge of the floor. You might notice a little bit of a difference to the 2021 cars. Down here at the front of the monocoque, you've got what we call the T-tray, that flat section, that leading edge of the car. Well, it's gone. It doesn't exist anymore. Replaced by this, you've got this big section sticking forwards. That's new for this uh, prototype car. I haven't seen this before. 
but the key is inside it actually. It's the entry to the tunnels. It reminds me a lot of an old Indy car or an old Champ car. And that's because this car makes its downforce completely differently to the current generation of Formula One car. And the idea is that a ground effect car should allow it to race better and follow each other closer in traffic. But along the side of the floor, the wing mirrors, I think there's gonna be a lot of play there. I think these are very much indicative. I think the teams will find a little loophole there. But look along the leading edge of the floor. You've got this, uh, this new element. I hadn't seen this before on any of the wind tunnel models or the CFD renders. You've got this section here. Now, I asked Pat Simmons about this because I was surprised to see it. And he says that's something that could be on the car, could be removed, but they're not sure about it yet. So there's still some experimentation going on about the floors of the car. But one thing that we will not see is the really advanced uh, sticky uppy bit or the cuts or slats that we got used to uh, in 2020 and to a different extent in 2021. Now, I still think there may be some little loopholes in the rules, particularly around this section to the leading edge of the tire and the trailing edge of the floor. There's just this little area down here, little curved section. Now, that curved section isn't, as I read the regulations, fully mandated. So I think the teams will have a little play in there. But the FIA have said that if there are any gray areas in the rules, they're gonna act really quickly to shut them down. Though I think there may be still some play going on on the floor, even though the FIA and Formula One says there's not gonna be. We all know what the Formula One teams are like. Something that will stay roughly the same though is this shape, the side pod ducts, that big swooping curve, that's essentially been regulated in for the 2022 season. Something the FI wants to see, well, Formula One wants to see as well, to improve the aesthetic of the car. And I think it's kind of working. This car looks very, very cool. Something you will see a bit of change on is around this area, the roll hoop of the car. You can see on this prototype car, there isn't one of those telltale little roll hoop stays. I think we're gonna see those introduced as the, the real cars actually get built next year. You'll also see some different shapes in this area because the different power units have different demands in terms of that intake system. But what you haven't seen on this car is that very distinctive split roll hoop that center line cooling concept. And there doesn't appear to be any scope to introduce that on these cars. I think we will see center line cooling used on these cars, but it could be quite different. So I think that's something the teams are currently experimenting on. Just a couple of other details to note. You've got a little tiny shark fin on the back. I'm pretty sure that's gonna stay. Bit of freedom on shaping of that for the teams, but we're not gonna see any T-wings. Those are gone for 2022. The other thing that have essentially gone, but is really odd to my eye, rear wing end plates. This uh, rear wing doesn't have a proper end plate. You don't have this, the section sticking up with the vents and stuff in it. You have this curved outer section with this, the, the main plane and the upper element switching through. And something else you, you may notice that isn't a feature of this car at the moment, there's no DRS actuator. So there's no DRS. That means the racing will be so much more pure if Formula One decide to stick with this route. Twin swan neck rear support. I think you'll see teams as now, Mercedes do it quite a lot, switching between the twin support and the single support, depending on the drag conditions and the car setup they want. The rear end plate that there is, the lower section, far simpler than anything we've seen in for a long time. This is a very basic end plate. Rear impact structure, that's been beefed up a bit. But here, let's have a look, come and have a look at this, because this is the real secret of this car. Down here, I'm going to get right down. This isn't so much a diffuser. This is the exit of the tunnels of the car. And you can look right underneath the car and see all the way through towards the front. That's where this downforce is being generated. But also there's some really key technical freedoms in here that are being hinted at it. Look at these little brake duct fins that are coming out here to seal off the side of the car. Then there's some more just in ahead of the rear wing end plate. So you've got the standard rear suspension diffuser and uh, well, standard rear suspension and gearbox arrangement that's not really changed since uh, 2021 the mechanical parts are largely the same but this aerodynamic section this is how the car generates all of that downforce so while the car may be a little bit slower when the season starts don't expect it to stay like that these cars could really stick to the ground and it means they can race really closely to each other but drivers need to be a bit careful because this rear sticky out a bit the rear impact structure that's the rearmost part of the car. That nose, it will go underneath that, but they could just give each other a little bit of a nudge. I wonder if we might see some bump drafting at Monza. It's pretty spectacular, isn't it? I'm really excited to see what the teams do with the new technical regulations and how far 
they can push those regulations to the limit when they develop their new cars. I cannot wait to see this car on track next season.